futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all, Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your metals market update and this is for Thursday and this is the 8th of March 2018 and the time about 2.07 p.m. Central Standard Time. As I'm putting this out, we're 23 minutes away from the president signing the tariffs on steel and aluminum into law. As he does so, we're all waiting to see what are the exemptions. We've heard that Canada and Mexico are now exempted. That's great news. I'm sure uh, Mr. Trudeau is beyond pleased, and he played it right. He didn't make threats back. He didn't do anything. He, uh, professional all the way. Mexico, on the other hand, threatened us in many different ways. We'll see how that plays. And China's got to be in our crosshairs with all this. And that could impact soybeans and some of the other markets that they import a lot from us, or it could be a non-event to them. They just say, yes, that's how it's going to be and let it go. By the way, that would be the smart thing for them to do. In addition, they should cut their budget deficit with the U.S. The president by accident wrote a, a one billion cut it by, he meant a hundred billion. We got a 375 billion dollar trade deficit with him. He'd like to see a chunk of that gone this year. We'll see if the pressures do it and we'll see if that still keeps pressure on North Korea. But when looking at the markets, Let's go right to the, uh, the gold chart. The market is still, if you will, in an up thrust. It's been in a corrective mode. It's down for the week 0.6. So can we say the market's flat? I, th I think that's what we're saying at this point. When I look at the thrust of the market, it's now in a down thrust. I pointed that out yesterday. You're back underneath the 18-day average of closes, but you haven't really taken out this part right here. So I do want to show this. You see this break low on a close, 13, 19, 90? What I'd like to see is the market take that out if it's going to stay in a down thrust. Otherwise, here's what can happen. You have a market, and if you just think about it, you could have higher lows, get back over the 18-day average, and you take out 13, 35, 20, you could set on just a chart of closes, the market up into its up levels. In other words, get bullish again. When we go to a daily bar chart, this is what we call a market that's doing a lot of nothing. As I put the swing line on, you can see that you have, and why I put a swing line on a chart, by the way, this is the chart without it. What's the trend off of that? It's easy for me, I can tell you the trend of this in probably one or two seconds. Lower and low, higher high. There is no trend. It's all I care about, no trend. Then I filter that with the moving averages. The 18-day average of closes is 133090. I have no trend, and via my rules that I teach in my charting course, when you're under the 18-day average of closes, that would mean you have downside bias. Again, no trend, downside bias. If the market falls further, where might it go? I look for the closest of a key moving average or this black dashed line called a Bollinger Band. In Bollinger Bands, it's an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within them 95% of the time. That does not mean that eventually they can't break through them in a major way. But often that's done from a market that narrows in in a pattern, not a market that's got a big broad trading pattern. So I would look that if the market fell, probably has reasonable support down there. What about if the market re reverses course now? If the market goes back up, a close over 133080 on the current pattern would give you higher lows. You already have a high that took out that high. By putting it over 133080, you're back into the uptrend. Remember, this market's just doing this. It's whipping back and forth, but that would do the job. Momentum-wise, there is none. The market got up to the 30 levels. It's no longer oversold. I define anything as oversold as being under 30. It's over that, but it's just drifting here. So you have no momentum to speak of. You have downside bias and no swing line trend. Sometimes the popular ETF will tell you more than the futures. In this case, slightly. 
You've got the higher lows. Even today's low at 125.13 is not taking out 124.96. You have higher highs. You can see that on the swing line. The market needs to close over 126.10 to get bullish. It needs a settlement price over that. Like the futures, dead momentum, doing nothing. So now I go to the gold miners. You're always looking to see, is something telling you? The mining stocks you're up today in, the gold miners at least on the ETF, you've got the higher low, higher high. You're not over the 18-day average. You have to get over it. Even if you take out 2131, you'd have a higher high and lower low, not a downtrend. If you take out 12496, you'd have a higher high and a lower low. So it's easier to get an uptrend going in the whole gold complex than a downtrend. I've just, and I had uh, drawn these for you earlier, theoretical support and resistance zone to an apex, and notice how we just stopped at that apex and we're hanging there. This is how many ounces of silver it would take to buy an ounce of gold. Right now it's 80.16. That's very high historically. Uh, you know, I remember trading it at 15 to 1, 20 to 1, 30 to 1 was considered high. 80 to 1 is a big number. Silver market up a little bit, but not much. Remember, we didn't see today with the threat of the tariffs people running to the precious metals. I think you want to read what the tariffs are before we can make any decisions. There is no trend in the silver. The bias is down so just like gold and momentum is flat. Copper got hit and it should have gotten hit. Why? Think about it. Tariff trade wars lead to people not trading goods. Copper's in a lot of goods, as is silver, don't get me wrong. But copper's called Dr. Copper for a reason. Economic barometer, temperature reading, that's what you take. So hearing the word trade wars, not a surprise to see the market come down. Can it get to the lower Bollinger Band? Maybe. It's already very oversold. Oversold can be corrected by the market either embedding, where both numbers get under 20 and go sideways, or the market goes flat or starts turning up and that number comes back up over the 20 levels. In the platinum market, if it were me t guiding you, what would I be saying? Lower highs, lower lows. Now you made your challenge pretty close of the lower Bollinger Bands, you threw the 100-day average. I think professionals were covering shorts here in front of today's tariff rules. We'll see if that turns out to be. Resistance, 956.60, the 100-day average. You got up to 960.10, you're up a little bit, but so what? You haven't turned the trend, but I'm questioning if you're not oversold enough to get the bounce. Palladium is not acting like it wants to get down there. A good rally today up $11, but the trend is down. You clearly have lower highs. I'm even showing you with the uh, red arrows those. Lower lows, but you're oversold. So we have a common theme in metals. They're very oversold. You've got to be careful. One other part to the market. The U.S. dollar has not been trending. It had a big up. It had another break low. It, again, like so many of the other markets, in the metals especially, you, you don't have a pattern of higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs, lower lows. It can become bearish if it were to take out, especially yesterday's low right here of 89.33. That would give you lower highs, lower lows. There is nothing on this chart right now that can turn it into a bull pattern. It can't develop the higher high, higher low. Momentum-wise, sort of flat. Trading in here in the 60s, 70s overbought. That's not close to it yet. You still have room here. And I think it's a wait-and-see market now. Everybody's waiting to see what the tariffs are, initial reactions to it, and they'll take it from there. And I'm going to use that to finish up my gold report. I've been wanting to write it, and today I finally found out that today's when the president's going to sign it. We'll see what it says who is impacted, how one gets an exemption, and I'll be able to write a more intelligent gold report. So I'm sorry for not doing it. There's another thing I'm doing before you even talk about this. Next Thursday, a week from today, I'm going to hold my first webinar. So I'm going to advertise it here. It's first come, first serve. Sorry about that. There is limited seating to it. Uh, you come in, and what it is, it's online. No, I'm not going to let you talk, but you can write me the questions, everything you need. And the reason is if I let people breathe and talk, you can't even hear me. I've, I've held these 
many, many years, probably 10 years. And I stopped doing them last year. I'm going to come back to them because volatility's back and people want it. It's hard to talk futures when you didn't have the volatility. Now you do. To get my gold report, and that'll put you on the list also to get an invite to the uh, re everything else. Call us at 866-973-2077. Go to our website www.irapstein.com. You can click up here if you see me on YouTube or underneath us in many websites. Click here and away you go. I am Ira Epstein. You have yourselves a good day and I will talk to everyone when? Talk to you in my next video, the financial one at the end of the day. Take care.